Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is about a little pocket porting on some LS3 heads. These are stock um, 823 castings. Uh, a customer had got these and sent them in to me for, to be freshened up and just do some pocket port work. Um, I did the valve job, which you'll get to see in a second, and the port work, so you can, you'll see all that in just a minute. But I, the reason why I'm doing this video anyway, one, is you, you guys probably can do this. Not the valve job part. You'd have to take it to competent machine shop to do that. But the rest of the stuff, I think you can. Um, the head turned out really well. Actually, to be quite honest with you, better than I thought. So, um, anyway, uh, let's talk about what was done. Valve job, obviously. It's a 45-degree seat still, so I didn't change anything there. 45 degree on exhaust. I did float with the radius clay thing. I just took it off because I was like, I maybe should do a video. I did, this guy's going to run a turbo, which is common for LS guys. But um, because of that, I went ahead and this is a little bit different. So I say pocket porting except for the exhaust. The exhaust got more done than the, than the intake port because it's all the way through. So um, I'll show you with the head off so you can see off the flow bench so you can see how much has been done. But um, pretty outstanding numbers. I'll give you just to tell you real quick before I pull out the flow sheet It went three almost 350 at 650, which is really good peak went 361 um, For the amount of work done. It's pretty good stock ones flow about mm, 315 so it's peak so this is a lot better. But anyway, let's let me show you some of the stuff Here's the flow numbers before I show you what's done. I know I'm going a little bit different order than I usually do. Usually I'll take apart the head and I'll show you, then I'll show you the flow numbers, but we'll see. Um, here are what we have. Um, the numbers I like most, for those that watch my channel, is four, six, and peak. Um, that gives me a good idea of what's going on, how good the head really is. If we look at the 400 number, it's 258. I was hoping to get into the 260s, it just didn't happen. It's just a pocket port job and a valve job type of deal. But if you look at 650, because most of this guy, I think he's going to run like a 660 cam. Um, 347, that's really, really good. But if you notice, it backs up right after. That's a real common thing with the LS. Um, it's it's not so much the short side, although the short side can have some play into that. It's more that the valve gets closer to the chamber wall and it opens up a different area at that point. And then flow starts coming back as the valve gets out of the way. It peaks at 361, which is really fantastic. Usually they only go in the 350s. So for the amount of work done and this, it's pretty good. Exhaust flow, um, I kept it kind of moderate on size. If this had been a nitrous deal, I probably would have opened up the exit more. On a turbo deal, I leave it slightly smaller than I would on a nitrous deal. And you're like, no, you should make it bigger. I need it to spool the turbos. So um, 235 is really good. It's not bad, but um, if I really got after it, you know, I did more aggressive stuff, it probably would be in the 250s, 260s. But this should work really good for spooling the turbos, and it's much better than stock, especially for the work that's been done. So there's the flow numbers, but let's see what actually got done to the head. Okay, here's what's been done. So just to kind of give you an idea. Again, I think you could do most of this with stuff besides the valve job. So one thing I did is I did my most aggressive 45 degree valve job I did put on here. Just because it looked like the seats were kind of worn more than normal, and one by putting it in there, usually if you do some port work, it really does gain flow, which it did. But the biggest other reason is the valve job looked like it was pretty worn out. So by doing the more aggressive one, it went in easier. If you cut valve jobs, you'll understand. Um, still 45 degree seat radius cut on that one. Um, but you could see what's been done. So you couldn't do the valve job yourself, but you could do the rest. So simply what I did is I opened the bowl up. I'll go ahead and tell you to 2.165. So that's 100% of the valve. So that's bigger. And then the throat, which is from here to here, is 91%. Now, I will warn you, if you try to do that with a stock valve job, you're probably going to lose flow. This, Because this is more aggressive, I can get the angles I need to make the turn. But if you just did it with a stock one, I wouldn't recommend it. So I did that. So I opened the bowl, opened the throat, and here's the, probably the bigger thing. Um, I did some work on the short side. I laid it back slightly, but biggest thing is I widened it because when you open the bowl through here you're gonna end up having it wider across the short side here. So you gotta make it match, which I did. So that's probably some of the bigger gains. If you look at the exhaust side, and again, this, this isn't like the most elaborate job. As a matter of fact, since someone's gonna ask, how much to do this work? The valve job and porting is 800. Of course, he had to have the head milled, so that was another 150. Um, 
this one ended up having to be milled 10 thousandths. And yes, I floated after being milled. Um, probably won't no, normally take that much, but it had a pretty good gouge in it that had to get out. And it was right in the fire ring too. So um, anyway, just giving you some ideas there. So it's 800 for the valve job and porting. And then... Uh, 150 for the milling. I know someone's gonna be like, well, I can get done CNC ported for 600 bucks somewhere else. I'm sure you can, but that's what I'm charging. On the exhaust side, you can tell it got opened up quite a bit. I mean, not the ex exit, but the bowl itself I made bigger. So if you're doing this, focus more on this side, which would be um, the chamber wall side, not so much this side. I opened up bigger here and of course shaped the vein. I also laid back the short side as well, but that's pretty much what's been done to the actual head. So nothing too crazy. Now there is something else that will affect flow. I did not flow this with stock valves. So these are the valves I used. This is a Freya 6000 series. And it's, I didn't even do a back cut on it. So you can actually order this valve from Freya and it'll already have the appropriate back cut you need. But it's, it's simply out of the box. It looks like it's hollow stem. Usually you could tell because it's got the little dish right there. And that's that's it. Um, it is a little bit different stock and that does affect flow. So I do, yes, it's a much better quality valve than stock. This is an Inconel exhaust valve and it's a tulip design. And that's also from Freya. Inconel because he's running turbo. So this is a 1600, that's still a 2165. That's how it is. Anyway, uh, if you have questions about this, just let me know. Uh, I think this guy's going to be pretty happy. It should run really well, um, especially for the amount of work. Now, some of you might be asking yourself, too, because as you're watching this, hey, you're a reporter. Why don't you talk about some of the other stuff with these LS heads? Because I get asked this one a lot, which I don't know. Let me get my flashlight real quick, and I'll show you, because I get asked this question. It might be too bright, but you can kind of see it. You see that spot there? People ask me about grinding that out. It doesn't hurt to grind that out. What that is, is that's the bump for the valve cover. So if you do this, when you put on your valve cover gasket, um, the bolts anyway, make sure you put some silicone in so you don't have stuff running into your intake port. So it's not a big deal if you put a hole there. Does it gain a whole lot of flow? Not so much. And usually you'd have to make it pretty big actually for it breaks through. But if you do, it's not the end of the world. The second one I get asked about is the bulge here. This bulge right here is the rocker. So the rocker arm actually goes through here. And some of us port that out. I, if I was fully porting this, I would absolutely get rid of that. That would all be gone. It will leave a hole here that goes to the rocker stand. And again, you just put silicone on the rocker stand bolt or the rocker itself bolt when you put it through. And that's it. Does it help flow? Absolutely it does. This one does. And it doesn't hurt anything. This one grinding out for sure will too. But usually, I rarely have to poke a hole through the top. Even grinding this all out, you rarely break through. Here, you're guaranteed you're going to be in the rocker stuff. Not a bad deal. Just make sure you put silicone on threads. Most aftermarket heads don't have it that way or that way. Usually, they'll raise up the, on this one, they'll raise up that boss so you never break through on the roof. On this one, they don't even care. They just leave the threads exposed. Most aftermarket heads, the rocker stud, or shouldn't say stud, but the rocker stand bolt is already exposed. It's not a big deal. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman, and you guys take care.